This is a video of three parts covering the new content that arrived after the Amplified 2022 Festival for Humankind. Firstly, I'll tell you what. Here it is. Spoiler alert, then I'll tell you how to get it. And finally, I'd like to just draw a little bit of discussion on what's next at the end of this video. First and foremost, let's talk about the brand new cultural wonder that has been introduced to the game. No, it's not the Colossus of Rhodes, it's right next door. Church of Our Lady, Mary of Zion. A little bit of a mouthful, I know, but let's take a look at this bad boy and see what it delivers. It is a classical era wonder, so it's unlocked in the second era of the game, and it provides plus five faith per number of enacted civics. It's important to note that unlike a lot of the wonders in the game, this is a dynamic event. It changes as you move through, plus five faith per active at the start of the game, and as we'll look at in a minute, may not provide you very much. And it may also get to a point where it starts to not yield you a lot of useful faith towards the end. But more on that in a minute. Let's actually supplant this bad boy down and see what we can do. So like any other wonder in the game, you can place it down anywhere you like in your territory. It's a shared project so all the cities can get on board, crowd their production in to try and complete it. Of course, one of its big things is going to be faith. And while I always argue that the faith system in humankind is basic, that does not mean it's bad. Basic as in relatively easy to use and understand. A couple of massively powerful tenets do exist in it as well, and I really want to highlight that. This one in particular, plus two industry on forest and woodland, is an incredible benefit early in the game, okay? So regardless of what you think of the religion as it moves through, on the usefulness, whether you like the system in relation to Civilization VI or not, it's important to note that there are some very powerful tenets hidden inside of humankind's religion and hidden inside of the faith system. And if you're building this church, you might even be more likely to choose a different outcome on events like this. For example here, I might choose to go for the science instead of the faith because I'm getting more faith. It's a small thing, but it pays to bear it in mind when we're taking a look at the new content that's been delivered. So let's get this bad boy finished. Its production cost is really no different to the rest. However, it's important to note, of course, as a church, this wonder counts as a holy site Whereas others may not, the Lighthouse of Alexandria, for example, or the Colossus of Rhodes do not. As I go through and annex some more civics here, you'll see I'm picking up most of the early game ones. Not too shabby. And through the magic of television and time, bada bing, bada bang, bada boom, here it is. Church of Our Lady Mary of Zion. 20 stability, and at this point it's providing me with 30 faith. Again, plus 5 per civic. An interesting uh, interaction between influence, which we use to purchase civics, and faith. There aren't a lot of these cross-sections in the game, unless you're playing certain cultures like the Morians, so maybe that's another little strength to it. I'm not really going to make too many judgement calls on its overall strength, however as I move through here soon to my second and third sections of the video, I'm just going to quickly build a holy site so that we have something to compare it to. It's not another wonder, but useful to look at its yields, no? Because of course if you're building this wonder, you're purchasing it over any other. The opportunity cost of this wonder is much greater than building a normal holy site, which doesn't supersede or stop you from building anything else. Of course, as you may know, when you purchase a wonder for 250 influence in humankind, the next one is double the cost. And then the next one is double after that. So sometimes you might not want to pick up wonders like this if they're not going to yield you good yields. Is plus five faith per civic a good yield? I actually think in the region of the game where this wonder is built, it's not bad. Plus 35 faith is pretty decent during the classical era, and getting a foothold of an early religion is very powerful. So I'm not going to actually say, oh, plus 5 faith, who cares, because I think it's better than that. Do I think it's better than, say, the Hanging Gardens of Babylon or the Pyramids of Giza one era earlier? Absolutely not. But I think if you compare it to a district like this especially, its faith generation is strong. If we compare it to a holy site though, I feel like it starts to fall down a little bit, right? 20 faith and 20 stability. Here I've got 20 faith and 35, 35 faith and 20 stability I should say, sorry about that. But really, is that worth it? That'll be your judgement call, not mine. I think it's a decent wonder, but I don't think it's game breaking and I don't think it's that overpowered. I'll probably build it in future. Now, how do we get the content? If you go onto the main menu, content, and then go across to the updates tab, you'll see the Amplified 2022 event, if you participated in said event. 
And before we go downloading it, I should also note you've received a new persona in the game. No, it's not hashtag give Jumbo an avatar, but it is an advanced persona to play against benevolent, so they value the happiness of their people and their freedom. And they're also adapted, so they can change their plan on the fly. These traits do matter, by the way. They're a megalopolist. So they like to have one city to control them all. Probably makes them fairly weak. Uh, you've, but that's just a judgment call here very early from me. You'll also get a few decorative pieces as well. These aren't game changing, but maybe some nice fun and flavor elements added into the mix there too. Now. How do we actually get it? Well, as I say, if you participate in the event, head over to the Games Together website. That's the Humankind forums. If you filter by the Humankind universe, you'll see the amplified rewards. Connect your Steam account or your chosen platform. I see Xbox Game Pass is an option. So too is the Epic Games Store, if you're that way inclined. And you'll get all of this glorious content, as well as that other content in the background too, by the way. Wallpapers, The Great Zimbabwe. There's a lot of good stuff there. So go and check it out if you haven't already. Now, onto the last part of this video. I'm going to try and keep this as brief as possible because I don't want to keep you here any longer than you want to be. But I want to just bring up a couple of quick points around Wonders in Humankind. So all of Wonders in Humankind, regardless of what era they're unlocked at, as I mentioned earlier in the video, are unlocked via influence. And influence cost. Initially, it's 250, regardless of your game speed, which feels bad, man. And then it scales up, doubling every time. The Church of Our Lady Mary of Zion is therefore likely to be fairly cheap for you because it's unlocked in the Classical Era. And actually I think that this wonder has a sweet spot around the Classical Era where its yields are great and then it quickly declines as the overall yield of faith declines later in the game. However, what I wanted to touch on more broadly was maybe more of an idea and discussion piece. It got me thinking, you know, in Civilization VI there are other ways to get wonders. Uh, technologies, for example, that can unlock them. It's not just stuck behind a ring-fenced paywall of a culture yield or an influence yield. Whereas in Humankind it is. And while that's okay sometimes, it got me thinking, in a large game with 10 players or 8 players, it's really easy to just completely miss out on the wonders. Because there are only 4 or 5 of them in each era, and they're all ring-fenced by influence. So if you're playing on higher difficulty, or if you're not playing cultures that favour influence generation like I'm trying to do here in this footage, you can kind of be left out. I wonder if in future it would be a good idea to implement either other preconditions, like the pyramids which require a river, but maybe we could take it a step further than that, <laughs> um, and maybe even other yields to purchase some wonders, to try and make them a little bit more adaptive and flexible. I love the way they're built, I love the way they interact and look in the world, but sometimes I can't help but feel that we might need to remove some barriers to entry or change the way that we ring fence the cost of all of these wonders to give players who prefer higher difficulties, who prefer more players and bigger maps, or simply different playstyles other than influence generation, the opportunity to use them. Either way, those were my quick thoughts. Please let me know below what you think. I would love your feedback. I always do. And until next time, I'll see you then.